Georgia, Georgia, the whole day through, just an old sweet song keeps Georgia on my mind. I said in Georgia, Georgia, a song of you comes as sweet and clear as moonlight through the pine. folks' reactions to just being in that space and engaging with the Freedom Singers. And, oh, wow, okay. So we got a couple folks who already went to us. Well, well, at first, like, I was a little angry. I mean, I understand, since I've been learning by this school, I understand what us African Americans went through back then, over by this color of our skin being separated by different places, with colors being called out of our names, getting fired, homes. And that makes me feel bad, because really, if I was back in that time, and it's a possibility for me to be a 14-year-old, or be like Emmett Till getting killed over whistling, over whistling at a female, and being taken out of his own uncle's house, and really getting being and thrown to a river. So, um, I really feel bad for the people who died that, back then for fighting for our rights. Oh, Even though it hit me hard, it's just wrong for her. And what they did to us back then. I'm so thankful you said that because you make me believe that some of my students don't just think it's 50 years ago. Because even when I presented them with stuff about like the Rwandan genocide, they're like, oh, that was so long ago. It wasn't that long ago. And so for you to say that makes me believe that if I presented this to my students, they wouldn't just think it's, oh, it's done, it's over. And I think it's really important for all our students to hear these stories and to know, because in 20, 30 years, there's not going to be first-hand accounts anymore. Yeah. There's, that's going to be gone, and it's going to be that much further. And I think it's so important for us to start spreading that message. And I've been struggling with being a math teacher and being able to find a way to do that. But it's way too important to even think about not doing that. And it's like that little bit of hope. Like yes, when I'm, we talk about learning leadership, I'm learning <laughs> that helps then affect my leadership. So uh, for me, I'm biracial, I'm black and white, and I grew up pretty much in a predominantly white group of friends um, and pretty much white society, I guess. So I never really had a lot of, I wasn't very in touch with my black history. And I don't, and I think for people who know me, they know I didn't even really define myself as being black until maybe junior year of college. And so for me, it's very important, I think, for me to be able to come to a place like Albany and talk to the Purdue's and other people and just really explore what black history and civil rights has really been um, in the U.S. And, and kind of find out my own history. And I think that then in turn allows me to reach out to my students and, and pass those stories along like we were talking about earlier. So I think it was very beneficial for me as a person just to be able to explore my own history. And then that will in turn allow me to pass that on to my students. Um, I just wanted to dovetail on something Michael said just about the representation of all people in the movement. And one thing that I think is really important to acknowledge is that um, that white people need to understand their role in the movement. Um, I think that it's really convenient and part of the narrative to say, like, okay, what was the civil rights movement fighting for? But then when I was in the museum today, I was like, well, what is the civil rights? What was the civil rights movement fighting against? Right? Like, you can't just say, well, there was a march that day when the KKK was burning crosses that night. Right? Like, there is something that you were actively fighting against at the same time. And so I think it's important, first of all, for white people to say, A, talk about race, B, understand your responsibility in understanding privilege, and then C, understanding how you can be an ally of people who, yes, it's, it's their struggle, but you also have a part in rolling back um, the systems or the institutions, um, as someone described it, that created that in the first place. Um, so I just wanted to say that really stuck with me today. You charge me to go back into the classroom and be like, look at the history that we have in our, not only our city, but our state. And so that so many people were part of this and gave their lives no matter what color, no matter 
what their beliefs are, and I think that Atlanta is such a wonderful city to do that. The streets we drive down are named after those those wonderful people, mm -hmm. and I think that we so rarely like leaders like um, Martin Luther King at the Purdue's, and even as us as teachers. What we first have to do is see what people need, see what our kids need, and then we have to give them the tools to be able to achieve that. So I feel like if I can't see what their dreams are or what they need or what they want or what they have to have in order to make a better life for themselves, then I'm not being a good leader because I'm not serving them and doing what I need to do for them and for Ooh. the other people. So that's and today I think I realized the difference between teaching and education. And um, an education makes you feel something. and Today, I think we all felt a lot. Like I left just like, my heart is so heavy. Um, and in education, you can't deny. You can't deny other people in education. So I feel like today was definitely a call to action because we all have been educated. And um, now I know I have to pass that on because my kids are shackling themselves now. And um, I feel like it's our responsibility to educate them on how they need to change that. When when Chow Sherrod came to Albany and the Albany movement started and later on the the Lee County, the Sumter County, I know you've heard about John and being charged with insurrection and and all um, I teased Charles Sherrod because we were down there in Baker County Pat and the Gator was there. Gator was the sheriff. And he was a mean sheriff who had killed a number of people. Um, had a speed trap set up um, where he, uh, you couldn't drive through without being stopped. And he was collecting money on the road. During the 60s, the Atlanta Constitution estimated his take on the road to be about 150000 This was in the 60s. Um, my father was murdered in March of 65 by a white man living in the county. And that summer, Snick came into Baker County. And Baker County hasn't been the same since. Um, we joined the movement. I say we because Pat and I became part of it during that time. Um, I made a commitment on the night of my father's death to stay in the South and to work for change. So started working with Sherrod and Snick and the other. Oh, freedom. Oh, freedom, oh, freedom over me, over me, and before I be a slave, I'll be buried in my grave and go home to my Marching up to freedom land. And don't let nobody turn me around. Turn me around. Turn me around. Don't let no jailhouse turn me around. Keep on walking. Keep on talking. Marching up to freedom land.